let's talk about black diesel and common rails. So I know lots of guys say, no, you can't do it. You shouldn't do it. You can't do it. Well, I shouldn't say you shouldn't do it. Lots of guys say you can't do it. And yes, you can. It can be done. Is it a longevity killer of the engine? Ah, man, I don't know. I've run, I've run it in my trucks quite a bit with no problem. Um, I know guys that do run it with no problem. One thing with the common rails, you have to make sure you get it very, very clean. Um, so the cleaning process is very, um, very critical doing common rail stuff. And the reason for that is because of the, the way the injector is designed and the very, very tall, tight tolerances inside. Um, you have to make sure that it is um, very clean and the viscosity is right. It does add lubrication, which is nice, um, but you know, you can get deposits and stuff. You want to make sure you can get all of the deposit out best you can or anything suspended in the oil, I guess would maybe be the right word, um, before you do it. Now, that said, if your truck has a DPF unit, I have never done this with a DPF, a DPF unit on. I am going to say probably with a DPF unit, if you're going to run, man, you wouldn't want to run it very heavy if you were. I think I would just recommend if you have a DPF unit, um, do it at your own risk. I probably wouldn't do it with a DPF unit, but completely up to you. If you want to try it, if you have tried it or have done it, let me know down in the comments uh, because I'm curious. Um, you would definitely have to do more cleaning, I would imagine. Um, and then obviously if you're down in the States or in Europe or something like that, you're pretty much, you're going to have a DPF unit for the most part. In Canada, we have not got to that point yet, but I'm sure it is coming. And that is the reason I drive old junk. So I shouldn't say junk, older trucks. Um, I like to be able to run this type of stuff, not have to worry about emissions stuff uh, and don't have a truck payment. So, but let's get back to, the, to the, what we're talking about here. Um, so if you're talking common rail, this pretty much goes for any common rail. Um, now that said, um, the only common rails I've run it in is a Cummins. Um, and I know a few guys that have run it in Duramaxes. So the Ford stuff, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Lots of Huey stuff. I know guys that run it in six liters. I guess that's not a technically a car. It's not a common rail. It's a Huey, but similar idea. Um, the Huey actually is probably not a terrible one because it actually heats it up for you. Um, so that's actually probably, they're probably one of the better ones maybe actually. Anyways, we won't get into that today. Um, so just talking common rail. So with the common rail stuff, um, like I said, you have to make sure the fuel is very clean. Now I have done some videos on cleaning. I am going to do a bunch more on cleaning um, because there's lots of guys that do this process. Um, I don't want to say wrong because that's not really, not really fair. Um, just not the way that I do it. I have found doing it the way that they, they do it. Um, either it takes a really long time or, um, it does, it's not up to par myself personally. So like I said, not saying that it's wrong. It's just a different way of doing it. If you want to follow them and you've never had a problem doing it the way they do it, that's by all means, keep continue doing it that way. I am going to talk more about doing it a couple different ways that I've done it. Um, and what I have found from doing it that way. And if you want to do it, whichever way you want to do it, I'm going to give you a few different options. Other people have different options. Um, you know, do what's best for you. So common rail, if you're doing common rail, I prefer, I, I recommend not to run more than 50, 50. So if you get, um, you know, if you're talking, let's say a, um, Let's say a five gal five gallons or 20 liters. We'll just talk about it in liter. We'll talk about it in parts, just so it's easy for anybody to figure out. Um, so we'll talk about it in parts. So let's say it'd be like 20 liters or 20 gallons, but we'll talk about it in parts. And then obviously if you want to go from there, you can chop it down into whatever size you're dealing with. Whether it be, I know lots of guys do it in 45 gallon drums. And I think I might set something up with 45 gallons or 55 gallon drums. I guess 55 gallon drums now. Um, talk about 55 gallon drum setups because I know quite a few guys do it in 55 gallon drums and they settle it in the drum and everything. And if that works for you, perfect. Um, but I just, I wanted to touch base on a couple different ways to do it, especially if you don't have a lot of room. I know uh, a couple guys, Sean sent me an email, Sean, thanks for the email. Um, and he actually built a little shed in behind his house and he has it set up in the shed. Uh, it's out of sight, out of mind. Um, you know, it doesn't have to worry about, you know, if, if 
it, it's not in his house garage because his garage is actually attached to his house and he didn't want it in the house garage, you know, because it does stink. My There again, my opinion, it does stink. Um, and, you, you know, if something happened, you don't have to worry about your house burning down because that is also a, you know, a thing. It's possible that you could burn your house down doing this. So, you know, like, just be forewarned, you know, try, do it safely. Do it in an outbuilding, I guess, is maybe the right thing to do. Um, you know, if you want to do it in your house garage, by all means, I did it in my house garage for many years. Um, I was just careful about it, made sure that if I had anything running, I was always out there, that type of thing. So let's get back on track here. So talking 50-50 mix. Um, so what I would do is, let's talk um, in, uh, in uh, 10, 10 of something, whatever it'd be, 10 liters, 10 gallons, whatever. Um, so you're gonna have uh, 10 and 10. So we're gonna talk parts, obviously parts. We're gonna go gas. And I'm putting gasoline now because I had a few guys ask what gas was. So I, anyways. And then diesel. So that was, that's what, with the common rail stuff, that's what I was mixing. So a 50-50 mix to start with. Um, I ran a 50-50 mix. And then what I also started to do was um, I would add um, to this mixture, I would add, um, I wanna say percent, but I know you guys don't like it, so I say percent. So if you have 20 parts, cause now you end up with 20 parts, right? So you're gonna end up with 20 parts. And this is, when you say black diesel, it's kind of a loose term because it, you know, there's a, a thousand different way to mix, ways to mix it. So we're just gonna go, that's a loose term of, at right this point, we have 20 parts of, bla of black diesel. Um, I would always add, you know, to myself, and I actually add gasoline to regular diesel fuel as well. Um, for, you know, a, a tank on my truck, I'll add five liters to a hundred liters of diesel fuel. Um, so I add gas to even my diesel fuel. I find that it runs a little nicer, starts a little easier. You can do as you may. I know lots of you guys say you shouldn't do that, whatever for what you vote. I've done it for many, many, many years in every vehicle that I've ever driven that was a diesel. My Bobcat gets it. Um, you know, it is what it is. My Bobcat doesn't run on black diesel unless I happen to be using it a lot. Yeah, so for what we do with it around the shop, I don't run it on black diesel. I just run it on diesel fuel with a little bit of gas in it. Um, just for simplicity, just for simplicity's sake, it does a lot of sitting. So um, I just thought I'd mention that. But I would say on this, um, like if I'm running this in a common rail, I add four parts. I would add eight parts gasoline to this myself. I would add eight parts of gasoline to this. So you end up with 28 parts of black diesel. Now, you can change around with this mixture, but one thing with, with common rails is the viscosity does make a very big change to them. So you wanna make sure that, because there's such tight tolerances inside there, it needs to be able to flow, it needs to be able to flow very quickly. So I personally, I would never go less, maybe than like, maybe do um, 15 parts to 10 parts, maybe. Uh, the common rails are kind of finicky. It just depends on what common rail it is too. I know the LB7 that my buddy has, he runs on black diesel. He runs his a little on the thicker side, but he also heats it. So that makes a big difference. And we will talk about that later in another video about heating, um, heating alternative fuels in general when you're going in to inject it. Um, it has been done for many years. It works, you know, I can't say it doesn't. So, so you end up with 28 parts of, of, of black diesel. Is it the cheapest way to do? No. Now, if you wanted to knock some of the diesel fuel out of it and, and then add your, your gasoline, you can do that. Um, I personally wouldn't knock all of the diesel fuel out because it makes it a little bit too fiery. Um, so, you, you know, if you wanted to knock a couple parts of diesel fuel out just to make this a little bit cheaper, you can. But, you know, it's one of those things. Um, 
And you also can mix it to, um, when you're gonna add the gas to it, mix the gas in prior to making it into, or making it into, I guess I wrote that on there wrong. You guys are probably screaming at me in the thing. That should have been uh, oil, not gasoline. You guys are probably screaming at me in the, in the video. That should be oil, not gasoline. Sorry, guys. I'll, I'll correct it. I'm sure I've corrected it already in the video. Um, <clears throat> but it just depends on how you're doing it. Myself, personally, um, I ran it very similar to this for a long, long time without issue. Um, I put on 250,000 kilometers on the truck before I sold the truck. Um, and the guy that I bought the truck from, um, he doesn't run it on black diesel, but um, he has not had any issues with the truck. He's run the truck for four or five years now. Uh, maybe four years, I guess, probably four years. Um, he's run the truck for four years now without any issues, all the same injection system and all that jazz. So. And you're cutting your, you know, your fuel cost probably in, you know, by 40% probably. So, and like I said, you can monkey around with this. Just be very, very careful. Um, I personally, whatever you're using for oil, I like to add that much diesel fuel to it or very close to that. If you want to mix the parts. So if you want to do your oil, your oil and your gas mixture, because I always do my oil and gas mixture at the same time to help with um, cleaning process. Um, so if you're doing 10 parts, 10 parts oil, 10 parts oil, and then you're going to put in, uh, let's say five parts gas. You could even do more, more than that because when you put your diesel fuel in, you can add more gas to the diesel fuel. If you want gas is usually cheaper than diesel fuel. Depends on where you are obviously, but, um, gas. So that now you're at 15 parts at that point, and then you're gonna add, and then add your 10 parts. You add your 10 parts to that, right? Or you're you're doubling, you're doubling parts to that. So you're gonna have 15 parts now, right? You're gonna have 15 parts. Hopefully this makes sense to you guys. I'm trying to make it so that it's it's it works for for liters and gallons, and people aren't complaining that I'm using percents. I don't know why it makes a difference to you percent, but anyways. Um, I realize it doesn't work perfect, but for simplicity, the percentage is actually way easier. Um, but the parts work the same idea. So um, you end up with 15 parts and then you put 15 parts of, of diesel on top of that. Now that is less gas mixture to it um, than your black diesel at that point, right? Wow. And then your diesel, right? And then you end up with 30 parts, right? 30 parts of whatever you're dealing with. So, like I said, the biggest thing on this is you gotta, you know, like it really depends on where you are. If you're somewhere that it's always hot out, you can kind of monkey around with this a little bit more. You can heat it. There's more than one way to skin a cat when it really comes down to it. Um, but like, just to give you guys some ideas, but like I said, be forewarned doing this um, is injection failure can occur. Um, you can, especially if the injection system isn't just up to snuff to begin with, um, you can have problems. So myself personally, if you're gonna run this on a common rail, you wanna make sure you have a really good lift pump, um, fast air dog, air motive, fuel, fuel lab, whatever it may be, or a mechanical pump, whatever floats your boat. Um, Myself, personally, you wanna make sure that you have a really good lift pump because it is gonna be a little thicker. Um, and now, on the heating side of things, like I said, I'll get into that in another video just because I don't wanna make this video too long. So, but that being said, or that said, can you run black diesel in a common rail? The answer is yes, as long as you don't run a DPF, probably. Um, so hopefully that helps some guys out. If you have questions, comments, or you want me to do a video on something, let me know down in the comments, like subscribe. And remember, it's not rocket science.